Hi there. Uh, this is a video I'm going to do about things I've seen uh, and dealt with when rebuilding Yamaha blasters. Um, just the littlest things can have a drastic effect. So first I'll start with the way this engine I just pulled apart and I stopped because immediately you see a couple of things. Now first I noticed this nut was you can turn it by hand it was not torqued properly and the reason being is this is upside down or this is somebody used the wrong nut in the wrong part on the engine the clutch is put together improperly everything's pulling out um, what this caused is directly in the engine case you see you have wear on the case itself where here's another one that doesn't have that damage you obviously see no wear but here's and I don't know who built this engine, but obviously it was built improperly. Um, we'll get to the rest of this when I get it all the way apart. So I've taken the pressure plate uh, springs and uh, plates out. And next you'll find you have this lock washer here um, with the nut. Now you have to bend the tab on the lock washer. And then loosen your nut, that comes off. Your lock washer's right here. Um, then this will pull off. The next thing you'll find is that guy, which will be locked down on the shaft. I've already pulled it out, so it'll be much further, and it's actually, there's a groove in which it sits. So once you take that guy off, then you'll be able to pull this off. Now, this engine somebody forgot something really simple and it's a spring washer and a spacer that sits on this bearing now they did not install that when they rebuilt this engine how do I know um, you can see there's teeth that have dug into this drive gear um, they're the idler gear teeth um, and that's because it doesn't have the proper spacing to the motor. Now that's what caused the marks on the case. So after you've taken the clutch off, um, you can go ahead and pull the shift shaft out. Um, it should just yank out here. It's hard to do with one hand. Now once you get the clutch off, the next thing you're going to need is some snap ring pliers. You're going to want to remove these and then you'd always discard these. You want to get fresh ones anytime you rebuild the motor. Next thing is your tab and nut. Uh, your tab on the lock washer and your nut for the counterbalancer. And then this um, you're going to have to take off just with a wrench. But I found the easiest way to hold these together is use your... Um, idler gear here to lock these teeth and it'll help you get these off now an impact driver is going to be the easiest and fastest way to do it here's your snap ring pliers and your idler gear always wear safety glasses when dealing with snap rings uh, they have a tendency to fly right off once you get that snap ring out this pull right off now there's Oh, there's something else they forgot. There should be a washer in between the snap ring and the idler gear. That's another thing they forgot. Um, that's the wrong washer <laughs> for the idler gear. So they have this motor all messed up. We're going to have to figure it all out. But there's another snap ring that you have to remove underneath before you separate the cases. Um, just a heads up for that. Uh, I noticed another thing um, on assembly of this motor um, these two gears should be locked together with a key um, it's just a little square piece of metal um, so when you turn one they should both turn in conjunction now this motor whoever rebuilt this you can see the crank moving and the gears aren't turning so this motor was not counterbalanced um, I'm going to swap this counterbalancer gear. I just happen to have a better one. This one's all rusty and nasty. Um, it doesn't turn real good. It probably hasn't been turning. Um, 
So we'll have to, uh, this motor's gonna need a ton of work and we might just scrap it and use it for parts. Okay, we got our, all our gears off. Uh, we're gonna do this in a second. This is real easy, you just take this nut off. Now you wanna make sure these stars line up with these grooves before you separate the cases. If you catch the ends of your shift star on these cases, uh, you can break this right off. Um, now, this is what I was going to show you. Uh, get an impact driver. Don't mess around with a screwdriver. You'll just strip these out. What you do is you put this in your screw. You make sure you have the right size head on so you have a really tight fit. And then you're going to whack the back of that with a mallet. But uh, this is called an impact driver. Um, yep, I would just suggest getting one of those. So we've taken the holders off of the seal and the bearing holders off the two, your crankshaft and your countershaft or your one of your transmission shafts. Now this is what I was talking about with your shifter. Make sure these stars aren't blocked here. Um, make sure they're lined up. Um, you can do that if they're stuck. Just rotate your transmission a little bit and that will allow this to turn some. Um, and then from there, we're pretty much ready to knock the your crankcase screws out. Now you want to make sure your drive sprocket is off. I'm going to take the uh, stator off. Um, flywheel's already removed. You will need a flywheel puller to pull your flywheel off. Um, and then there again, I'm going to use the same impact driver I did before to knock these screws out here, or at least loosen them. Hopefully whoever built this, which is not likely, um, use anti-seize on all the engine bolts. But it's not likely. Just remember to have your shift star lined up. And you need everything removed. This is a spacer. This will just pull out. This just keeps the seal tight on this. Uh, now what they had done is when they had assembled this, it has the key. Here's the key. Should have been in this slot connecting this gear with that slot to this gear with that slot. Now they only had it in this gear. So it was keyed to the shaft, but it was not keyed to the counterbalancer gear, which they had crazy vibration if this thing started. And what that led to is broken frame mounts and an, uh, we'll just say an effed up motor. Um, I think this is going to be trash. All new bearings are going to be needed. Um, there's metal shavings all through this oil. So... So here we have all the engine case bolts out, and you can see I've mounted a case puller. Um, your crank's your biggest thing to push on. You don't want to really mount this to anything else. So um, what you're next going to do is I just use these engine case bolts. Um, I never reuse these. I always upgrade to a stainless steel much higher quality with an allen head so I can get the right torque on everything. So I never reuse these. That's why I just use these engine case bolts to hold my case puller. And uh, like I said, next, the only thing you do is turn this. And I like to tap around the edge with a mallet while I turn it. And what you want to make sure it's happening is you can see it's already starting to separate. It's separating evenly the whole way down. Um, now, again, always make sure your shift star is lined up to go through these grooves. So... Uh, all right, I'm gonna start turning this and we'll get the cases open. All right, so the cases came apart really easy. Um, that's most likely because somebody used this red RTV, the wrong stuff, uh, when they rebuilt this last. Um, now, a couple things might fall out, your shift forks. Just pull those out, don't worry about them right now because they're all numbered. Um, this guy and the bearing always comes off with that um, just make sure all these pull out 
Um, now, that one's going to be a little trickier. There we go. Let's wiggle everything now. Transmission shafts. Uh, this one's going to bind up on me, so I'm going to need both hands. And this is your counterbalancer. This will just pull out as well. Um, now, you can see we already see some metal. Um, and I already noticed on this side of the crankcase, we have some scoring. Now, I don't see any cracks or any stress marks in the wall, so um, I'm going to look at it much closer when I'm done, and obviously we have the other side to worry about, um, but maybe we'll be able to replace just the bearings here, and I, I'm going to put a new crank in it just because I don't like the damage that this one has, but um, we'll figure that out in a little bit. So, we got our cases apart, and this is what we found. Uh, we got a little crack right here. This is the only one I could find. Um, so I think we're going to weld these up and get it all fixed up. It's not that bad. So um, I'll do another video when we're putting these back together. I'm going to redo these these uh, bearings here. You can see they, they don't want to move. They're all gritty. Um, they just need to be replaced. Uh, I may end up replacing all of them. So uh, I'll do another video when we're putting this thing back together. Thanks.